Now, degree 59 has been, is, was issued in 2011. And since then, there have been two other degree, 189 and 116, uh, to make certain amendments to 59. And they provide the implementation guidance to convert the SOE into shareholding companies. Degree 59 is usually referred to as equitization um, degree. And for your information, uh, currently Degree 59 and its subsequent amendment decrees are now under the review for revision. Apart from those decrees, um, there is another one which we think is very important as well, is Decree 81. De Decree 81 was just issued in 2015, and it is a, you know, uh, a big step uh, made by the government to try to improve the transparency in the information on the SOE performance. Degree 81 actually set out the requirements on the information that SOE need to publish and make it very readily accessible, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to the business community. The last one, but not least, and we think is of the interest to the current audience of the day is Decision 58. Decision 58 is whereby the government actually cut, classify the SOE into different categories and they, always, they, and they also share the expected proposed state ownership ratios in such uh, SOEs and it is uh, it is put into the implementation for the period from 16 to 20. We will come to decision 58 in a few more slides. So in the next few slides, I will share with you that um, what are actually the driving factors for the government to privatize SOEs. Now, there are numerous um, reasons and the first is actually the continuous trend of the state budget uh, deficit. So as you see that we summarize here um, on this, uh, in the slide, the trend and also the gap between the revenue and the expenditure of the government from 2011 to 15. And that trend continues uh, to work. Uh, uh, 2016 and um, the revenue collection by the Vietnam government is coming from three sources, main three sources. The first one is from the export of crude oil. Um, the second one is from import duty. Uh, and the third one is from the SOE. Now with the crude oil price very fluctuate and actually very low in the last few years. Uh, together with Vietnam joining various uh, FTAs and thereby have to reduce the import duty um, very much. And with the poor performance of the SOE, uh, the revenue unfortunately is not really, and, um, you know, as the expected level as the government wants. And that's why they think that they want to privatize the SOE to improve um, the SOE production, economic reasons, etc and in turn will hopefully improve the fiscal deficit. The second factor as um, slightly mentioned previously is uh, Vietnam, as you've seen that we set out the path the Vietnam government has taken since 95 up to now. They have been very, very active in negotiating and integrating themselves into the global economy um, and um, joining various foreign trade agreements with various countries in
agreement is good, um, then actually um, it also places the pressure whereby you know the domestic enterprise need to continue to improve themselves uh, to be able to maintain a good competition when a lot of a uh, trading barrier is down. And um, the government trusts that by divesting um, their stakes into uh, in the SOE and let the private investor to come in, then the financial result, the operation efficiency of those um, SOE will improve and in and in turn will improve the economy. Another one that driving the factor of the, to privatize the SOE is um, the contribution and the significant flow of the foreign direct investment. So the growth of the GDP has been bolstered by domestic demand and manufacturing exports. And the, in, the influx of the FDI actually contributes significant part to that. Uh, as you see in the screen that um, the registered and dispersed uh, foreign direct investment in Vietnam continue to increase and almost double since 2012. And um, electronics, manufacturing, textile, real estate are one of the key sectors. So the government understand and realize the importance of the FDI play to the economy and by privatizing SOE, they hope that they have they uh, provide more choice uh, for the foreign investors and let them to particip participate more actively um, in the in the economy of Vietnam. Now, the last but not least is the performance by the SOE. As you see, that uh, we obtain the figures from General Statistics Office is an official. Uh, database, statistic database by the government, and you will notice that if you compare the net turnover of the SOE, um, of the net turnover as the percentage of the long term assets of the SOE, private uh, foreign owned and private domestic, you will see that unfortunately the SOE has the most, you know, uh, poor performance compared with the, the other two. And in terms of the average salary, um, then you know the state-owned income in debt um, also is um, competitive in a way that it may actually um, drive away um, the people from the uh, private domestic uh, sector. That will actually means that um, you you pay more and you will take maybe talent uh, away. From the sector whereby actually have a very high efficiency of using the assets to generate turnover like the private domestic. So that is one of the reasons to privatize SOE, let the private investor to participate um, in the sector whereby the SOE, whereby the government does not necessarily to retain the 100% ownership. So the next slide will show to you the number of SOE and SOE IPO in Vietnam. You will see a sharp increase from 2013 based on the Vietnam government strong will to accelerate uh, the process of equitization of the SOE. By the way, for those who are not familiar to Vietnam contest, um, the government prefer to use the equitization uh, to indicate the process of privatizing uh, the SOE. So you will see that you will see that along my presentation, sometimes I use equitization, sometimes I use privatization, but actually they are the same. So the the next one we share with you is on the progress of the divestment from the SOE. So for the first Four years, we have almost 600 SOE equitized, and it achieved 96% of the targeted number by the government. 
And from 2016 and 2020, the government intends just to hold 100% in about 103 SOE. The others, they will equitize. The remaining, they will equitize. Uh, also, in the last two years, we have uh, seen the successful equitization of some very high-profile um, SOE. Uh, first one, like Vietnam Airlines, um, the leading allies uh, in Vietnam who have been operating, you know, since a last few decades, or the privatization, the equitization of Petrolimex. Uh, and uh, within the uh, first quarter of this year, um, the Vietnam State Investment Arm, SCIC, also divest 9% of its capital uh, in Vietnam milk. So, I mentioned to you earlier about Decision 58. So Decision 58, just in summary here, so that you can see is, it shows a list, it shows a plan from 2016 to 2020, whereby the government want to, um, you know, uh, show clear plan uh, for the divestment of its um, shares. And it classified the current SOE, into four categories. The first one is whereby the government want to retain 100%. The second one is whereby the government will retain 65% or above. The third one is they retain 50 to 65%. And the fourth category is they will retain under 50%. In the slide, we show those companies just as example, because the list here on the slide is not exhausted list. Um, if you want to refer to the full list, you should um, refer to decision 58. But this one is the, the decision 58 is a very is a highly welcome by the business community because the first time ever they put out a very clear plan, they put out the name of the entities and clearly say that how much the government want to retain in such and, and that really helped is helpful for the um, for investor, private investors, uh, of, you know, how the privatization of the SOE will go in the next five years. We emphasize again, the name of the entities here are not exhausted. Um, so if you want to have full list, please refer to decision 58. If you cannot find it, please send a mail to our uh, team and then we will send um, such list to you. Thank you. So here, uh, I just run to you about some of the, I mean, key fundamental uh, points regarding SOE, the driving factors for them, um, and how they play in the market, how, how is their role in the market. Um, in the next few slides, in this second part of the presentation, uh, I will run to you um, to two important topics. The first one is the equitization process. And the second one is the key considerations for strategic investor. So mean that if you want to come in as a strategic investor uh, in an SOE, what would be the key consideration for you in relation to such deals? Now, for the, for the equitization process, uh, again, as shared earlier, that the government actually um, issued Decree 59 in 2011, and whereby they um, provide the guidance on the conversion of the SOE into shareholding companies. And they say it very clearly, the objectives of the equitization are centered around the four um, key points. The first one is to convert the enterprise in which it is unnecessary for the state to hold 100% into multiple owners. The second is they want to mobilize more capital from both domestic and foreign investors. Um, the next one is increase the financial capital. And the last one is renovate technology and improving the governance. Now, just to share with you that all of these are Four objective is of equal importance. But um, you have to remember one thing is, depending on specific circumstance, 
then this objective in case one may be more important than in case two. For example, it's really case by case basis. We have seen the cases whereby, for example, Vina milk, whereby the government actually focused very much on the bidding price. So mean that the one that who offer the highest price will just be able to select to be selected. But in some other deals, uh, pricing is just one of the factors. The government want to see more, for example, whether those uh, investors can really contribute in terms of improving the synergy uh, for the uh, to, to the target company, whether they have a knowledge uh, of the industry, whether they have a network. For example, uh, in some of the power plan equitization, let's say gas fight, then the government want to see that whether the potential investor can have a constant supply of gas. So, you know, all of those things are whether they implement or they are leading in terms of technology. So talking, finding, discussing with the SOE to understand the criteria, uh, the objective they will put as priority in the equitization is something we strongly recommend. We also think that it's helpful to share with you uh, the stakeholders, or uh, let's say the authorized body um, that determine the appropriate method of selling of the shares. So they include, for example, Ministry of Industry Trade, Ministry of Finance, who you know will involve in how the uh, equities, equitization fund will be used and dispersed. Um, during the equitization process, Minister, Ministry of Labor, who will take care in, in terms of, you know, how the employees of the SOE will be treated uh, during or after the equitization. Uh, Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, which is in charge of the land use right. I mean, usually SOE, because of the historical position, um, they have access to a lot of prestigious land and good location in the city, in the location, um, uh, in the area where they are located. And how those land use rights will be dealt with um, during the uh, equitization process um, belong to the uh, responsibility of Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment. Uh, similarly, Ministry of Planning Investment as the body under the government is just promoting foreign uh, direct investment, um, actually they will be rather helpful in the process because their role is to promote the, the, the investment of pri private investor into Vietnam. Um, so, you know, having their support is always uh, recommend. Um, um, State Bank of Vietnam, who is in charge of, uh, you know, um, Forex and uh, all of the currency issues, Etc. Now, I want to uh, draw your attention here is we mentioned about Ministry of Industry and Trade. The reason they are mentioned because um, many, many SOE are under their um, supervision. So, let's say Vina Milk, Sabeco, um, Habeco, uh, Vina Taba, Vietnam Tobacco Corporation, they are under Ministry of Industry and Trade. But let's say that tomorrow you are interested in uh, acquiring shares in some tobacco company, uh, in some, let's say, transportation company, then the ministry in charge would be actually Ministry of Transportation. Or like, let's say if you are interested in an agriculture company, then the ministry in charge would be Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Rural Development. So again, um, that ministry in charge can be uh, different depending on your target company. The equitization process uh, also actually uh, set out the requirement that um, when the undergoing equitization entity has more than 1.2 million in US dollar in total asset, that they need to involve a third party with uh, valuation function. 
Now, just to want to share with you that the Ministry of Finance um, has a um, list of certified valuers. And um, such, um, there are, I think, that about uh, 40 certified valuers. And only those uh, certified valuers can conduct the valuation of the SOE during equitization. Uh, I hope that so far all of the technical is good. People are good in hearing. All right, good, thanks. So now um, the next slide I want to run to you to walk you through a sample strategic investor selection process. Again, my apologies that um, the the slide the the, the letter is small, but wish to share with you one of the important thing here is, please note the word we use here sample, yeah. So this is not standard. Why? Because um, even though there is certain standard, and this is the quite standard uh, selection process. Uh, in in reality, in practice, the process can be very different based on specific case. So let's make it more clearer is let's say if you are involved in buying some small SOE, uh, they do not play very much important role in the economy. They are not Vietnam allies, they are not virtually mixed, etc then actually the process can be simple and standard. But then if the moment that you are involved in the SOE, which is, um, let's say, a high profile, or let's say is one of the leading entities in the industry uh, they are in, then the, the process can be very, very different. So anyway, come back to our sample process here. Uh, the first one is you need to have uh, the uh, you need to have the registered uh, registration by the investors. The target SOE will review, shortlist the investors, and they will submit their equitization plan, including the shortlist um, of the investors to the ministry in charge. I repeat it here: it will be ministry in charge. And in that step three, there will be a lot of back and forth discussion. Uh, maybe, you know, the equitization plan need to be revised several times before it is being finalized. Maybe the shortlist of the investor can be reviewed as well, because the ministry will say that, no, we prefer to have a certain category. So can you go back and look at the, your shortlist and, you know, ensure that um, the shortlist meet the criteria you want? And then let's say after the SOE and the ministry in charge has been able to finalize the draft, then they need to submit that plan to the government uh, and the government office will be in charge here. They will review and approve the equitization plan. And then the SOE will officially invite the investor to participate in the offering process. Now for the offering process, and we call it DD and negotiation here because there could be negotiation or that there could be auction, depend. First, firstly, the investor need to submit the share subscription form. And then, you know, the SOE would issue the offering regulations, the reserve price, and the investor deposit an amount that not be seen 10% of the subscription amount. The SOE then select investor to direct negotiation or auction process. If there are three or less, they will do for the direct negotiation. More than three, they will go for the auction. And if you know, like the shares, uh, there are some shares that oversubscribe, then they go for auction process. If there are the shares are under this uh, subscribe, they go for direct negotiation. Uh, it is normal if you see that uh, a seven, um, let's say potential buyers or investors to come in and uh, negotiate at the same time. But then usually after, let's say, one or two months of negotiation, they will usually drop 
um, the one that they don't see as fit and they will focus more on the one that they, they see fit. So that's how, how, how that works. Um, so the next one is we want to share with you on the key considerations um, of the strategic investors. Um, so when you want to go into SOE, uh, what consideration you need to uh, take into account. And um, we categorize the considerations into four categories. The first one is the equitization process. Now for equitization process, we wish to draw your attention into first thing is the stakeholders of the seller. Again, we are talking about an SOE here, whereby they are, you know, subject to the control by various and various um, ministries. And they will also be subject to the decision by government office. So that's why you have to anticipate that you will not be able to have first one decision maker. You will have to deal with many decision, make, uh, decision makers. The second thing is um, you will find yourself a lot of time facing the situation whereby you come to a negotiation meeting and after you share all your arguments, your ideas, your points, um, then the only thing you have you receive is they will collect all of your information and report because um, they are, I mean, the SOE is unfortunately cannot make the decision themselves. They don't have to report back uh, to various stakeholders. Um, so mean that the point for the stakeholders here is because there are many stakeholders, you need to anticipate the fact that the process may actually take longer than anticipated. So if they, they tell you that um, it could take um, you six months to complete the process, um, in fact, actually, it can be, you know, double the time. Yeah. The second one, similar, si similarly, it is uh, process considerations is the overall uncertainty of the process. So this one uh, I have already shared in the previous slide, because uh, even though there is certain framework, but the specific procedures, additional procedures, um, can vary case by case. Uh, there are flexibilities on how each process and transaction being run. So that's why our advice to you here is, you need to continue to keep a very regular, constant communication with the seller, the target company here, and their advisor, if any, to ensure that you can anticipate of any, let's say, unexpected steps, turns, requirements in the process. The next one also relating to the process considerations is restricted process and information availability. Again, one of the questions usually raised to us by the potential investor, by our clients is, oh, you know, we thought that this is A, B, C, D step we will go through. Uh, is it true? Um, is it something we can expect? Then unfortunately, because again, the SOE themselves cannot make the decision. And in many cases, they think that they can help you to go through step A, B, C but because of certain restrictions by the SOE regulations to you know, conduct such process. So that is we call like you, you should not expect something like very international standard uh, process for potential buyer here. The second here, uh, point under this we want to mention, we want to uh, emphasize is the information availability. Uh, we must say that usually the quality and the quantity uh, provided by the SOE uh, during the SOE project is quite a kind of um, is quite a kind of um, uh, limited. The next one is uh, process considerations valuation. Then again, because um, 
the, the valuation will be determined by the third party and also by the government. The SOE may not have much voice here because they have to follow the instruction by government. And we see valuation is usually a big deal. Um, you know, in most of the uh, SOE case we have been involved. For process management, we talk about the timeline management here. The timeline management here is, um, as you see that because of the involved the previous shareholder of the many share, uh, stakeholders, because of the um, not very standard uh, process case by case basis, then the time can be quite delayed from the seller side. But from your side, if you want to maintain things very effectively, uh, please ensure that um, whatever internal procedures you have to go through, uh, you do it and you do it in parallel to ensure that uh, things are uh, to ensure that things are, you know, uh, under control. Um, for process management, let's say if you have an investment story, um, um, a successful investment story, let's say that you already, you know, work and very well in some of the similar case in some of the SOE in Vietnam or SOE in the country, that is a very good story to tell, uh, to sell, uh, you know, as a kind of uh, effector to facilitate and accelerate the process because they feel like more, you are more reliable, you are already exposed to the way the SOE works, etc. Uh, for business plan and pricing, then business well, business plan and pricing here. Then uh, first, we just want to share with you some um, overview. Is um, now unfortunately because the quality and quantity col um, of the um, of the information is is limited. Uh, Sometimes you have to not just rely on the information provided by the target, but also on your own analysis of that sector of the market so you need more information not just rely on the on the target uh, information and for the scenario analysis it's very important that um, you should consider the various industry um, issues um, company issues the sector industry um, so that you can also project certain financial criteria identify certain kpi key kpi and such can play the key parameters in your scenario analysis. Synergies. What do we mean by synergies here? Now, assuming that if you are coming in in an SOE, and that SOE uh, will bring to you some other synergies such as cross functions, um, you know, expand your position in Southeast Asia. Um, help you to complete your supply chain, etc. Then that synergies value need to be taken into account on top of the stand alone value of such company. For working capital and capital expenditures, I'm sure that I do not have to go this into detail because these are the key things that impact on the working capital and capital expenditure. Um, and, and I think that you, you need to um, anticipate that, unfortunately, in Vietnam, public information quality is not that well. And that is whereby you need, you know, maybe some of your advisor to come in and verify your assumptions when you work on your uh, financial model to ensure that the working capital and capital expenditure are accurately uh, projected. The last key considerations we have is relating to the SPA, Send Purchase Agreement and Negotiation. So, because provided that most equitization transactions, like currently, just resign you as a foreign private investor uh, to have a minority investment, and the ultimate seller of the transaction is the government. So you should expect that the SPA terms will actually commence in a very favorable term for your seller rather than, than, than yourself. So you really have to work from there. And uh, another thing is um, you need to really identify the potential issues and difficulties 
um, especially relating to the representations and guarantees, um, you need to ensure that you assess the closing conditions and closing precedent uh, very, very carefully to mitigate uh, the risk. And you may want the seller to make certain representations on something that you and them are unclear. Other thing is like the veto rights, the right of refusal, etc. Now, because remember that you likely will just have a less than 50%, you may want to look at the SDA to ensure that how you can agree with your target on the corporate governance. Because 51 is just 2% different from 49. But at, at, even at 49, whereby you are not the majority shareholder, what can you do? How far you can involve in the operation uh, decision, strategy, decision? These are very important and need to be set out very clearly in the SDA. Because remember, your target is SOE. You know, they are not yet familiarized themselves with all of those things on corporate governance, etc. So set yourself very clear, it's very important. Another one we want to uh, mention is, there are certain, let's say, financing arrangements, uh, certain special incentives that the target, the SOE currently are, uh, is, enjoy, is, is, is enjoying. But you need to find out that after you go in, then whether such a kind of special treatment still continue or not. So those are the very key factors for you to, to consider. Um, so I think that um, that's it. And I wish to move to the, um, the, the questions. Now, uh, what I want to share with you here is, due to the time limit, uh, we have about 15 minutes to go through all of the questions. And just in case, if we do not have the time to run through all of the questions based, we highly recommend you to, you know, note down your questions and send over to our team. Or even when I, I answer the questions, then when you hear my answers, you have a further questions on my answers, no worries, you note it down. And then um, I myself and my team will send the questions to you directly. For those who have a certain specific deals uh, in your head or, 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 or are now in exploring the Vietnam market and ask and wish to have a more of kind of like one-to-one um, -one, uh, discussion, again, no worries. Just send us an email and my team and I will uh, ensure that we can arrange the time for you via Skype or via a telephone conference, etc. So, so that is uh, some of the, you know, uh, uh, things I, I wish to share with you in terms of the, uh, the question and answer. So without delay further, uh, let me come in uh, to have uh, some of the um, questions raised. Now, the first one I have is the question on whether we have a shortlist of the SOE to be privatized uh, for each sector. My answer here is, uh, please uh, look at the decision 58 as a kind of your, let's say, um, emission guidance starting point. Now, not on the, the, the all of the four categories set out, the, um, the decision 58 set out in their appendix 11 sectors that the government will retain 100%. It also have another appendix of the four list of the SOE, uh, whereby, you know, some they will have uh, retain 100%, the other 65% and above that I already mentioned earlier. The beautiful thing is under each of that uh, category, they have the name of the SOE as well. So, you know, it still means that if you talk that, yeah, there is that quite full list. After you review that list, uh, you can identify the sector or the company you are interested. And then from that, um, you can dig out information uh, further. 
Again, uh, you are more than welcome to contact us. But again, this is a very good point to start. If you are interested in the, um, the list of the target SOE, the um, another question which we find it very interesting is um, does the uh, I'm sorry before that uh, I just want to go back on the um, question on the, uh, the the list of the target SOE now among that I cannot remember 300 something list it's not all that all suddenly like from day one all of that 300 you know will just go out and ready for equitization. Uh, some will go early, some will go later. So, and it's very hard for us to really, you know, just, I mean, give you the status of each. So it's just nice to identify your preferred sector, your strengths, some of the companies you want to explore, and then contact us. And we will work based on such a shortlist. It will be much better. Um, and, and, and of course, uh, when we share the information, we will uh, tell you that, um, you know, how soon the equitization for that specific company will be, what are, what are special restrictions in such sector you are interested, etc. So the, the next question is, um, does the government have a preferred investors? Uh, now, actually, um, the answer here is uh, yes and no. So what does it mean no and what does it mean yes? So no is the government in debt. They, they don't have a really a kind of preferred nationality they want to deal with. Not really. Uh, because once they open the SOE, whoever coming in and who see Vietnam as their potential market, who want to have a, such a look at such SOE, they are just really welcome you. So that is no, sorry, no prefer uh, nationality, etc. But in terms of yes, then let's say that the government tend to have a more a kind of uh, trust that the deal is likely to go through when they deal with investors coming from, let's say, Japan, Korea, uh, or like from investor who already, um, you know, have uh, some successful investment story in ASEAN. Why? Because uh, Japanese and Korean are the top, I mean, investors in, in Vietnam, many of them big companies, big names, um, they are already in Vietnam for a long time. So they quite understand the market, they understand the culture, their lenders, their banks, the government also understand how the, the Vietnam uh, work. And so it means that it, may, it gives the authority, uh, the, the, the government a bit more, let's say, um, trust that likely the, the deal will go through. But it doesn't mean that, let's say, if you are from a country that doesn't have much presence in Vietnam, then immediately they put you into the blacklist or they put you down into the bottom of the list. Definitely, it is not the case. So, so that's what uh, we want to, to share. So um, I think that um, another one, um, uh, the question here is, can you give us an example of a strategic foreign investor who has come into the state-owned enterprise space in Vietnam? Now, when I read that question, I suddenly remember that maybe I haven't really shared with you on what I mean, um, on what what we mean, or like the government mean as strategic investor. So the strategic investor is used as a distinguished uh, with the majority owner is. Uh, when they view majority shareholder or key shareholder um, being the one that who, I mean, hold the majority of the shares and mean that uh, contribute um, good financial or fund or own a good portion of the capital in the entity, the government used the term strategic investor to refer to somebody who does not only contribute in terms of financially,
but also who actually um, has the, let's say, um, market industry or has been a very seasoned player in that uh, industry who can contribute a lot to the development, improvement of that target SOE. Right, so, so let, let us agree on that term so that we will not be confused ourselves. So because of that, uh, we have a, some successful story of the foreign investor who come in into the SOE and they are very successful. The first one I want to mention is Vina Milk. Now Vina Milk is a Vietnam Diary Corporation and um, they are the leading uh, they are the leading diary and diary products <clears throat> uh, in, in Vietnam and they already have a long term have a FNN diary investment. FNN, FNN diary investment is under the group of Fraser and NIF. Uh, it, it is a Thailand corporation. Um, FNN has been the strategic shareholder with uh, Vietnamil for a long time. And recently, when the government decided that they will divest 100% of their shares in Vinamilk, then the FNN continue to buy those additional shares. And Vinamilk continue to be, um, you know, since the joining of FNN, um, Vinamilk continue to improve on their operations, their uh, risk management, uh, their financial reason, and is a very, very respected brand name in the market. Another example is um, JX Holding. Uh, JX, uh, JX are also known as JX uh, Nippon Oil and Gas. They are the leading uh, oil and gas company in Japan and they already acquired 9.9% .9 in petroleum mix in 2016 and they came in at, as petroleum mix a strategic holder. They will, um, they will continue to focus uh, on this uh, because they, um, they, they mean that 9.09% .09 is just their first uh, step. And for your information, Petrol Max is the leading uh, petrol import and distribution uh, in Vietnam market. Another example is Vietnam Airlines, again the large uh, leading airlines in Vietnam and their strategic uh, shareholder is O Nippon Airway, again very famous name uh, from Japan, who actually have 8.7% and of course is now in negotiation, uh, in discussion to increase uh, more shares. Um, uh, they have uh, some restriction in terms of competitive rule uh, in Japan, so that's why I, I cannot come in as a very high uh, share uh, shared portion in, VN, uh, in Vietnam Airlines. That is the reason why they come in first at 8.7. So um, the uh, next question we have is, uh, we understand that um, there is some uh, requirement uh, to ask us to give you the update on the job decree to replace degree 59. Now, first one I wish to mention here is, remember, this is Team Such. Um, it is Team Such, a, um, a, how to say, a um, uh, draft. And because SOE equitization is so important um, that this draft will be subject to many changes. And uh, because it's, it is subject to many changes, what we share with you now, um, you know, may be removed in the final version, all right? So, uh, and here I just want to share with some of the key, um, key fundamental proposed changes. Uh, the first one is um, they may consider to just um, remove the negotiation for strategic investor. They may say that now they prefer to do auction. Again, um, whether this will go through in the final version, we are not sure because there are some arguments of pro and con. The pro uh, to mean that to support the removal of the negotiation because they think that this is the government assess anyway. 
So once the government already put the money in, developed the SOE into that good state, um, then they had the right to ask for the one who offer the highest price. Uh, but then the cons is um, the, the, the not very supportive. This idea is they say that strategic investor, because let's say that I am a power developer and I have a very constant good supply of, of gas. I also have a good network. Uh, then, you know, if I come in and I can immediately, you know, provide the company with constant gas uh, supply for a gas gas fired power plant, the one that I want to buy, then this is a kind of non monetary but very good value. So that's why I don't want to pay that high, you know. Um, and, and for strategic investor, maybe that's non monetary value you need to look at. So again, we are not sure that whether it will come true. Uh, another one is um, like, you know, they, they, they try to reduce the time um, uh, for the transfer of the shares. So let's say that if you transfer the shares uh, for, uh, they say that strategic investors need to get the shares within the first five years, now they will change it to three years. They also say that for the budget and expenditure to do equitization, now they think that they want to let the target, uh, let the SOE to determine themselves, which we think is very good, good choice. Because currently we find out that a lot of SOE, they don't have enough budget to engage a proper advisor to help them with the selling process, uh, which, you know, create a lot of delay because they are not familiar right themselves with those things. Um, so, you know, um, there are more questions. And um, I, I want to answer, but unfortunately, because the time is, is uh, running out, again, like I said, please uh, send your questions. We can send the mail back or we can set up a time count to follow up. Uh, once again, thank you very much for your listening. So as I said, that's all the time we have for our webinar today. I think it's very clear that this is a complex area for investors in Vietnam, and we cannot possibly cover all the aspects of the issue in under an hour. On behalf of Ms. Ha, let me remind you that KPMG Vietnam has a track record of navigating these interesting areas of business in Vietnam. Please contact us if you would like advice on your market entry plans. Our next webinar in the Investing in Vietnam series will take place on Thursday, June 8th, and will cover the topic Best Practices Deals in Vietnam. On the screen um, now is a survey. Uh, we would really appreciate hearing what you thought of our webinar today. Please help us by responding to the survey before exiting our event. Later this afternoon, I will send you a follow-up email that will include a link to the recording, uh, and as well as our informative slide deck and information on how to contact us. On behalf of our esteemed speaker, Ms. Ha Do, as well as the team at KTMG Vietnam, thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your day.